In this video, we're going to discuss the possibilities of arbitrage in the futures market and use as an example the silver market. If we look at a very general formula for futures, the future should be the spot rate times 1 plus R, where R is the risk-free interest rate, plus S, where S is the storage cost expressed as a percentage of the spot rate, minus the convenience yield, all taken to the time until the future expires. If this is expressed in exponentials, then you will have F equals big S, E to the R plus little s minus C times T. And if we use the simpler case with no convenience yield and assume that rather than using exponential compounding, we're using annual or semi-annual compounding, then, then we will have futures equal spot times one plus the interest rate plus the storage costs to the time t, where t is the time to delivery of the contract expressed as a fraction of one year. We're going to look at our example again of the futures market. So if we look at the future price of silver expiring in six months, we get around $22.07 an ounce. The current spot price of silver is $21.99. The six-month risk-free rate is around 0.15%. An estimate of the storage costs is around 1%, and we are assuming no convenience yield. So under these conditions, we can calculate, again, the future rate, equals the spot rate, if we assume no storage cost, times 1 plus r to the t. Looking at that right here, we are going to have the 21.99 times 1 plus 0 0.0015 taken to the 1 half power, and we get without storage cost that the future price of silver should be $22 and basically one cent. So how would arbitrage work? Well, if the future price was above the calculated price or the theoretical no arbitrage price, then what you would do is you would short the future, you would buy the spot, and you would pay for it with borrowed money assuming you can borrow at the risk-free rate, which a hedge fund basically probably can if it's big enough. And then at expiration, this equation would have to return to this equation, and you would make a profit. If, on the other hand, the future price was less than the calculated arbitrage free price, then you would go long or buy the future on silver, you would short the spot future, and you would lend out money. If we do the same calculation, including storage costs, then we add in this little component here of around 1%, and we end up with an arbitrage-free price of $22.12. So a little bit different than the arbitrage-free price with no storage cost of $22 and a penny. Uh, both of these are, of course, reasonably close to the actual future price, and when you do these sort of transactions that are mentioned here, of course, there are going to be transaction costs. So as expected in the real market, there isn't an arbitrage opportunity, because if there was an arbitrage opportunity, hedge funds would take advantage of it, and there's lots of computers on Wall Street that look at this sort of thing and try and make money without taking on any risk, i.e. arbitrage. Our sources for data for this was the CME group, which is where we got the future price of silver. Um, we used storage costs from this precious metal tax, which gives you estimates of various storage costs in various locations. We got our interest rates from the Treasury Department, treasury.gov, and I also got this nice graph on the past prices of silver, um, from macro trends. So we can see the silver price going all the way back to the 30s has been as low as around 
in the 30s during the Great Depression, and over $100 during the early 1980s when there was A, an inflation scare, which made gold go up too, but also the very interesting story of the Hunt brothers attempting to coordinate the silver market, which caused silver to skyrocket. Silver has dropped down again to around 5 to $10 during the dot-com bubble, but went up to, up to close to $60 around the uh, time period of the housing crisis. I thank you for watching this video.